What happened out west, there is a lot of concern. Folks are taking this very seriously. We expect to see uh, them picking up their step pretty quickly here, running for the T and cover. We're live on Causeway Street. Back to you in the studio. All right, Rondella, we want you to get inside and be safe as well. Harvey, l let's talk about this for a moment. You were just looking at that live picture we still have up right now over the garden, and you can just clearly see the sky changing so dramatically. Yeah, you know, of course, it's very chaotic. It's very turbulent. It's really very classic as a squall line approaches. Uh, that's when you get all of that look, that darkest look. Uh, and you know that we have, obviously, a strong line of thunderstorms coming in. And, in fact, we not only get the wind at about that period of time when you start to see the skies darken like that, even ahead of the actual rain often is the very strongest wind. And speaking of which, we've had some updated reports. So Westfield and Springfield had wind gusts 52, 53 miles an hour, and even a report of three-quarter an inch a diameter hail. So you can see what we're talking about. And here, as we show it to you in three dimension, I mean, you can just see it just vertically up into the atmosphere. Atmosphere, notice the lightning. I mean, it's pretty continuous. You just keep looking and you just see the white glow coming. From Cappy Ireland. Auburn. Down toward uh, Connecticut as well. So, unfortunately, once again, Springfield, Westfield bearing the brunt of this particular storm, though, thank goodness, not tornadic, but still a severe line of thunderstorms as we've seen. You could have 50, 60 mile an hour winds. It's enough to take down tree limbs, some trees, and create some power outages. And then you have all the lightning, then you have the hail in some cases, and all of this is showing very, very heavy a torrential rain. One of the saving graces in terms of the rain is that you can wait out just 15 or 20 minutes because this whole line is moving eastward at 40 miles an hour, so the rain doesn't last that long. The total amounts of rain won't be that high, but in that 15 or 20 minute period, half inch, three quarter inch, inch of rain. It's all coming in a very short period of time. So that can make the water collect and, and cause that situation where you get some temporary flooding. But you can almost be sure when you see the continuous nature of the oranges and the reds and all of this, this is just a well-defined classic squall line. It runs out ahead of the cold front, interestingly enough. The cold front is still farther behind. Now you might say, are you sure? Because when these thunderstorms come through, the temperature really cools down. Well, that's the rain-cooled air that's causing that and the downdrafts that are part of a thunderstorm. But actually, after that, it will grow still, and then it won't be until the cool front comes through later tonight that the humidity levels will truly start to drop. So it gives the appearance uh, that you've changed the air mass, but really it's the squall line that's a Ahead of the actual front that comes through. And when it times out to be in the late afternoon during the maximum heating of the day, that's when you often get the strongest squall line because you're talking about the chance for the temperatures to reach uh, the max. And even here, where we've gotten to the 90s or low 90s in some places, this could have been a 100 degree day if we had sunshine from the start. Instead, we had showers and thunderstorms at 7, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, and the sun didn't really break out till close to noontime, didn't have quite as many hours, and that's a little bit of a saving grace, meaning that as significant as the squall line is, it would have been even worse. But we certainly don't want to shortchange it, because if you're in Boston on the South Shore, you haven't even had it. You're just getting ready to get into this right now. And that, of course, leads us to storm tracking and our HD Doppler, and, of course, to Mike Wacom. Hi, Mike. Hey, Harvey. Yes, we're looking at Worcester right now. You can see kind of the rain on the lens there as the storm has actually kind of passed off. Now, you were looking at the garden a few moments ago, and you were looking at this one little cell that I've put a track on uh, right in Medford now, Malden in three minutes, Cambridge in four minutes, Everett in about five minutes. And as I zoom in on that area, there's a couple things I want to point out to you. Uh, radar, uh, a couple things you need to know about radar, what we have happening. Notice this little area you see right on the S there around Boston. Actually, what our radar beam there is hitting is it's hitting the Prue and the John Hancock. It gives us a false signature. So those items are not there. The one that you were seeing to the garden, though, up here towards Medford, Somerville, that's the one that is really turning the sky dark right now. And as we were looking across the Charles River just a few moments ago, you could actually see that darkened cloud kind of working its way in. Now, also, if we look out here toward the west, you'll notice how I'm starting to see just a couple. Of, I'm going to move this tracker out here to this one by Waltham. Again, all of these kind of moving in the same general direction at about 35 miles per hour. And now look at how the sky is kind of almost lightened a little bit there over the 
in the garden. Remember how it was really so dark? If we looked over to the left a little bit of that, you'd probably see the darkened clouds, but to the right, it seems to have lost a little bit of its intensity. But as I track this one that's sitting out here now towards Waltham, you can see that it's going to be uh, in the Waverly area in about two minutes, Arlington in about three minutes. Uh, again, a lot of lightning with it, a lot of sky. Oh, this is the shot I wanted to show you there. Look at what you're looking at there. You're looking at the thunderstorm as it's coming in. You're seeing the lighter sky off to the lower section that you see right there. Now, what happens a lot of times when people see these cells coming in, that leading edge, it's called a gust front. It can actually have a little bit of rotation to it, but it's more like a, like a, a, like a rolling pin. And you'll see that kind of coming at you. And people get very, very concerned about that, but that's because of the winds that are going on, the updrafts and downdrafts and things are going. A tornado is actually tucked under of a rolling pin and when that comes right over the top that's where you get that sudden burst of wind that comes out and moves right across the area so that is one thing you're going to be watching there as it comes across the city and i want to alert you to that because as you're outside and you see that coming at you you might be a bit concerned with it as you should be and that's of course the time you should go in yes liz mike i wanted to mention to you because you're talking about these strong strong winds that are moving through and we're getting some damage reports and one coming to us from the massachusetts department of transportation saying that there's a traffic alert in the bolton area right around i-495 northbound and exit 27 and that's Route 117 in Main Street. Apparently there is a tree down and it's mm. blocking two lanes. And uh, we also heard from Sean Kelly uh, tweeted earlier too that there are some trees down in Bolton. And Jack Harper also tweeting that reports of trees down with power lines in Springfield. It's not widespread, but again, these winds are tearing some things down. This, this is Jack Harper's video from Northampton as, as he was driving through. And, and, and it, it, is, it is an intense rainstorm, mm -hmm. but, but just imagine the, I, can, I cannot just imagine all the, all the terror that people were feeling out there after what they had gone through just a week ago. Uh, yeah, actually, Harvey's got some. Go ahead. That rolling over. cloud that Mike is alluding to, uh, yeah. we actually call that a shelf cloud. Yeah. And a lot of times people see that and they're fearful because it is a significant type of a structure that it might be something relating to a tornado. This